the origins. It can be stated that the source of YHWH's origin is unknown. Likewise, the exact pronunciation of what is known as the Tetragrammaton is also unknown. However, there are different ideas about it, and evidence can be presented with historical and archaeological facts. As for the Tetragrammaton, the four Hebrew consonants used to identify the god YIHWH, attempts have been made to decipher the true pronunciation of that name without definitive results. Translators, scholars, and theologians have proposed different vocalized forms for pronunciation, such as Yahweh, 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 Yahoo, Jehovah, and some others. On this channel, we do not advocate any particular pronunciation. For simplicity, we will continue to use the four consonants YHWH throughout this video. Although some scholars say that the letter W is not of Hebrew, but Arabic origin. Regarding the origin of this god, we will present the opinions most accepted by experts. For example, the cult of YHWWH as the god of metallurgy originated among nomadic copper smelters between the Bronze Age and the Iron Age, suggests biblical scholar Nisim Amzalag, a biblical studies researcher at Ben Gurion University. It should be noted that no mention of IHEH is found in Ugaritic texts. In these texts, it is only the god El who is presented as creator, king, and father. The name and consonantal characters YHWH appeared out of nowhere in the ancient Near East. No, YHWH appears in the Ugaritic texts. In contrast to Baal and El, neither the name YHWH nor places related to that name were known in ancient Palestine. Approximate calculation of ages. The Bronze Age goes from 3300 BCE to 1200 BCE. The Iron Age goes from 1200 BCE to 500 BCE. The Age of Classical Antiquity ranges from 500 BCE up to 70 CE, Second Temple Period. According to scholar Nisim Amzalag, YHWH, long before becoming the deity of the Israelites, was a god of metallurgy as part of an ancient pantheon consisting of several gods. He was worshipped by smelters and metal workers throughout the Levant, not just the Hebrews. Most scholars believe that the cult of YHWH first emerged somewhere in the southern Levant, partly based on Egyptian texts from the late 2nd millennium BCE. We will consistently use the acronym BCE to refer to the time before the Common Era an EC to refer to the Common Era. Those Egyptian documents describe groups of nomads known collectively as Shasu, including a tribe called Shasu YHWH, that tribe being perhaps the first recorded worshippers of YHWH in history. Most scholars recognize these southern origins of YHWH. Regarding the name YHW, Michael C. Astor, who was a professor of history at Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville, observed that the hieroglyphic interpretation corresponds very precisely to the Hebrew tetragrammaton YHWH, or Yahweh, and is older by more than 500 years, to the earliest appearance of the divine name on the Moabite stone. And Dutch scholar of ancient religions Karl van der Torn concludes, in the 14th century BCE, before the cult of Yahweh reached Israel, groups of Edomites and Midianites worshipped him as their god. Reading between the lines, the Bible contains clues that point to an original identity of YHWH as a metallurgical deity, says scholar Amzalag. When the first encounter with YHWH appears in the Hebrew text, 
these stories are usually accompanied by volcanic type phenomena. For example, when he descends upon Mount Sinai to reveal its laws, the mountain bursts into fire, spewing lava and billowing clouds accompanied by earthquakes and thunderstorms. Exodus 19 verses 16 to 19 say the following. And it came to pass, on the third day, when morning came, that there were thunders and lightning and a thick cloud upon the mountain, and a loud sound of a trumpet, and all the people that were in the camp trembled. And all Mount Sinai was smoking, because the Lord had descended on it in fire. The smoke rose like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain shook violently. The sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God responded with thunder. Poetic metaphors throughout the Bible describe YHWH as a fiery deity who makes the mountain smoke as in Psalm 144 verse 5 which says, Yahweh, come down from heaven, touch the mountains and make them pour out smoke. And in Psalm 18 verse 18 YHWH is represented as an anthropomorphic furnace, smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire came out of his mouth, burning embers burned from it. Most archaeologists agree that after the collapse of the Egyptian Empire, the Edomites, and not the Israelites, took over the place called Timnah. While the Bible goes to great lengths to describe Israel's neighbors, such as the Edomites, Midianites, and Moabites, as cowardly pagans, the text also relates that these nations also worshipped YHWH, possibly even before the Israelites did so, points out Dr. Amzalek. Further biblical evidence of this expanded base of worshippers can be found in the book of Exodus, where Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, plays a key role and lives near the mountain of God. It is Jethro who indirectly leads Moses to his first encounter with YHWH at the burning bush. Later Jethro offers sacrifices as indicated in Exodus 18 verse 12 which says, And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took burnt offerings and sacrifices to God, and Aaron and all the elders of Israel came to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. But Moses' father-in-law was not an Israelite. He is alternatively described as a Midianite priest, Exodus 3 verse 1. This expanded base of worshippers even extends into Egypt's interior, to an island called Elephantine in the Aswan region, where the first cataract of the Nile is located. According to Gad Barnier, a scholar of biblical history at the University of Haifa, a notable Yahwist community inhabited the island of Elephantine. Elephantine was the home of that thriving ancient Jewish community that had its own temple to Yahweh, priests, and sacrificial rituals. They had originally arrived on the island from Palestine, most likely in the mid-6th century BCE, and built a complete temple, with priests, sacrifices, and an altar. This temple was dedicated to their main ethnic deity, YHW, also known from biblical tradition and from some extra-biblical documents of the time. However, the temple functioned next to that of the Egyptian god Knum. 
Along with Yahweh, these Israelites appear to have also worshipped other deities, Anat Bethel and Ashim Bethel, demonstrating polytheistic beliefs. Some of the leaders of this temple-based community were called priests of YHW. The leading members of the community, both men and women, were called servants of YHW. This reality is demonstrated by archaeological discoveries at that site, such as the Elephantine papyri and a cursed tablet with text written on a fragment of pottery dated, according to its writing, in the 5th century BCE and includes a reference to the temple of YHW. The Elephantine papyri predate all extant manuscripts of the Hebrew Bible and therefore provide scholars with a very important insight into how Judaism was practiced in Egypt during the 5th century BCE. But unknowns remain. Where did the cult of YHWH originate? Who were the first people to worship that god? And how did become the sole deity of a group called Israel, which, as its name itself says, in Hebrew, did not even begin as a Yahwistic people, but as followers of the main god of the Canaanite pantheon, the god El. How did this smelting-related god, worshipped by seminomadic peoples throughout the southern Levant, become the solitary national deity of only one of these nations, the Israelites. <laughs>